Hello, welcome to Wicked Wednesdays with the Water Witch. This is Anwen, and today we are in the Rose Garden. Um, so first, I want to say I know it's been a while since I've done a video blog. Um, I finished up school, I had finals, um, catching up on life because of school. Um, then I got sick, so I just haven't really had a time to uh, make a video. So, um, we have a visitor. Right here. There he is. Say hi. Alright, I'm away. So, we are going to talk about roses. Um, so, first off, uh, there are so many different varieties of roses. Um, it's estimated that there's maybe 10,000 different kinds worldwide. Um, my personal favorite, um, well, I guess I don't really have a personal favorite, but um, one of my many favorites um, is the dog rose. And the thing that's special about the dog rose is it has five petals, and the five petals, if you look at it, um, are in the shape of, of course, a pentagram. So that's one of the reasons that I like dog rose so much. Um, the rose is also uh, related, closely related, actually, to the hawthorn and the apple tree, as well as the cherry, and a couple other ones. Um, it's often used in um, oil and perfume. Um, rose hips, which are, so this is your rose here, right? You have this rose. And then a rose hip, what happens is this little guy down here, this piece here. After the rose has bloomed and fallen off, that little bulb right there, it gets bigger and bigger and bigger. And in all plants, all roses have rose hips, but um, the dog rose or rose canna, um, they are the ones that turn red and have several small ones on a cluster. And um, they're really, really high in vitamin C. They're often used in um, jellies, jams, pies, uh, chutney. Rose hip chutney is really good. Um, so, uh, rose petals actually have been used um, in, like I said before, perfumes and oils, but also candied rose petals. Um, so, that's a lot about rose and. Um, those petals and, and stuff like that on the medicinal and uh, mundane arena. However, roses and magic. Um, so, roses come in just about every color. They even have a rose that is, they call a blue rose. It's not quite blue, but it's really close. They have green roses. Um, behind me here, um, these are purple roses. They're actually a lavender color. And then we have behind me, uh, right here, is uh, it's the same rose here. It's, a, it's an older variety. They cabbage in the center. Um, they look kind of like a cabbage. And it's a two-tone pink and white. This one's name is Eden. Um, that's the plant variety. Um, then right over here, whoop, other side, there we go. We have... Um, orange uh, firecracker roses. So, and they only have actually uh, two or three layers of petals where this one, as you can see, has one, two, three, four, five, six, ten layers, roughly, of actual petals. So, um, you know, we can talk about roses all day long, but let's get to the good stuff. Let's talk about magic. So, um, roses and magic. We all know that roses have meaning. Uh, red roses is love and yellow is friendship. And you can use those common meanings um, in your magic or you can do um, some different things. What I personally like to do is, since I grow a variety of different roses, I will use their colors um, corresponding with the elements. So, uh, for Beltane, using uh, like this type of rose right here that has the fire colors. 
um, you can use them as offerings, decorations, uh, perfumes, incense, you know, <laughs> the whole, uh, they smell great in incense, we use that a lot here. Um, deep red is really good for women's mysteries, of course, love, blood, the uh, really dark roses, they have a few that are um, like a deep purple or a black. So there's a black baraka rose, I believe it's called, um, which is a very, very dark red, almost black. And then they have um, ebb tide, which is um, a really, really, really dark purple, but more on the, the purpley blue side than like the orangey red side. And there's a couple other ones that are really like that. And so those real dark, deep ones are great for shadow work. White is good um, for um, connecting with like the higher self, the spirit realm. Um, it's really, really good in um, rebirth, uh, purity, renewal, uh, those type of things. Um, let's see, the light purple ones. Um, I like to use those um, with the white for a lot of those same reasons. Um, they're also really pretty just as offerings. Um, let's see, yellow roses, they're great to work um, air magic. So are uh, the white and the purple ones back here. Um, you can also use the yellow with red or orange roses to do fire magic. Um, the uh, the blue, blue roses and the purple ones back here um, along with white roses um, are really, really good for uh, water magic. Um, earth magic, any of the darker reds are always good for that. Um, some of the uh, more like goldeny orange colors, the like burnt orange, that's really good for uh, earth magic as well. And of course, I mentioned earlier, there is a green rose out there that can be used. Um, the pink roses, those I tend to use a lot for love versus the red. The red appeal to me so much that I feel like they have a deeper meaning. So lighter reds and uh, light pinks and pinks, um, they get used a lot in um, Aphrodite worship and veneration. Um, they get used uh, a lot in friendship work. Um, now, don't get me wrong, I use on my Aphrodite altar almost every single rose. Whatever calls to me is what she gets for her, you know, offering um, that day. So, uh, currently, we have one of these sitting on her altar. Um, and then we have some, uh, last, last week was the uh, long stem white roses. Uh, a few notes about growing your own roses versus roses from the store. So, roses from the store, you're going to get those beautiful, perfect rose that looks exactly the same as the other rose, and it has that really long stem. Um, and they're really, really beautiful. They're great for offerings. They're great for um, uh, work uh, in circle or, or um, uh, on your altar. Um, or if you use board, um, what, however you practice um, uh, your your craft, um, they're beautiful and they're really really good to use. Um, however, you should not eat them, you should not ingest them, and you definitely don't want to be burning them and uh, inhaling their smoke. If you're burning them outside of the be okay, but you really have to be careful with pesticides and additives that they put into the store bought uh, flowers. So um, I grow my own, so I very, very rarely buy roses. However, I do um, oftentimes, especially when the roses aren't in bloom, or um, if we're doing something that requires a dozen long stem white roses, um, then, you know, I'm going to buy that because I'm not growing long stem roses. Um, so. But like I said, so you can't eat those and you can't inhale their smoke. However, if you're growing your own roses and you know exactly what it is that you're going to um, uh, do with them, 
inhaling smoke, um, eating them, making chutney or uh, candied rose petals. Um, you need to know what is going into itself because I grow my own. I use absolutely no pesticides. I don't really use fertilizers other than my natural um, compost. Um, so I know that when, if I wanted to eat this rose right now, I'd be safe to do so. Um, it also is really good and gives me peace of mind when um, doing uh, that for clients as well, um, giving them tea or something like that. So you always want to make sure you know where your rose petals come from. If you don't have access to ones that you can eat uh, safely or drink safely, um, you can get them from Mountain Rose Herbs. Um, I'll be opening up a shop soon, actually. Um, surprise! <laughs> um, Rose Thorn Apothecary. It's uh, under construction right now, but there'll be a big announcement, and we will actually be selling uh, different colored dried rose petals. So if you want to get the firecracker rose petals, you can. Um, if you want to get just deep red or white, you can. Um, and know, of course, that they're safe to use. Um, so, thank you so much for joining me in my rose garden, and I hope that you have a wonderfully wicked Wednesday.